Okay, let's get back to my example of play using the Invasion Game Turn 1 only sequence of play. We are now at number 2, Allied First Movement Phase. The units in the Invasion Beach Boxes land at their appropriate beach hexes. I've already done that. They may move no further if they are in an enemy zone of control. The commando units move their full movement allowance but may not enter an enemy zone of control at this time. And paratroop units may not move at all in this phase. So, I want to also apologize for the um, quality of this video. Uh, the phone that I normally use and the camera on it uh, is out of commission at the moment. Right now I'm using my Stone Age webcam to uh, photograph this video. Whatever. Um, so, all of these units here, uh, the landing force, are in the z zone of control, enemy zone of control, that unit in the fortress. Okay, let's see one other thing here. Let's zoom in here a second see if that helps. Uh, slightly. <laughs> okay, so the only units that um, that are allowed to move are the commando units. I'm just going to put that back where it uh, belongs. Um, so, we're going to move this commando unit. One, two, three, four. And try to put that unit, the 4-1 German unit, in the zone of control uh, of that unit. What am I doing with this 7-4 over here? Oh, never mind. Duh. That was a paratroop unit that I've already dropped. Okay, moving on. And this commando unit, uh, 1, 2, We're also going to project a zone of control. Uh, this will put a zone of control into these hexes here. One thing is, well, he's in an entrenchment, so I don't think he's going to go anywhere. So, how's if I don't keep moving the camera around? That is it for the Allied movement phase, uh, first movement phase. Then we have the Allied Combat Phase, number three. The Allied player then allocates his land units and naval gunfire to attack and resolve combat. Units in an invasion beach hex adjacent to enemy units must attack all those enemy units. So I'm going to cut off the video here and uh, calculate all the attacks that I wish to make and allocate naval bombardment and make it a little bit easier on myself and you. Okay, I'm back. We're going to do the Allied Combat Phase. I'm not going to allocate any naval gunfire because um, I have six, uh, 19 factors in this hex and 20 factors in that hex attacking a 4. It looks like I'm about at a 9 to 1, so I really don't see uh, need to allocate any naval gunfire support to this particular attack um, if I've calculated it correctly. So we're going to have 9 to 1 odds and there will be a plus 4 to the die roll. So that's the effect of being in the fortification. And all effects on combat addition to attacker's die roll when defender is in terrain. So he's in a fortress, and I'll be adding four to the die roll. Uh, let's see, is that everything else? And I've cut off his retreat path here, if he should be lucky enough, but it looks like it's pretty much, huh, well, it looks like it's pretty much all exchanges, or, yeah, it looks like it's a lot of uh, exchanges, sorry, at that particular um, odds column. So this will probably... Um, be kind of painful for the allies. Let's go ahead and roll though. Hmm, I get an unmodified die roll of four. We add four, and then we're going to be on the uh, eight. 
column and the nine to one uh well the nine to one row on the eight uh ah, let's try this again the nine to one column and the eight row calls for an exchange so an exchange eliminate all of the defenders units and eliminate an equal or greater number of the attackers units in terms of combat strength points the attacker loses on the full combat strength basis of the defender before allowing for supply and terrain modifications of that value. So basically it's um, face value. So what do we have here? Let's remove you out of the way first. Take away my markers. Uh, my fancy visual aids. And we will eliminate the four strength, basically German garrison. Um, now I have to decide. It looks like it's going to be an armored unit because they're going to come the closest to uh, the four. There's what two infantry and armor nut hex, and there's one inf two infantry and one armor, or two armor and one infantry in this hex. So we will get rid of the six. So in the exchange rate category, the Allies took the greater losses, obviously, but that's okay. Now, let's check on advance after combat. Something I probably should have done before I started this uh, video, but the best intentions... Let's see here. We got naval gunfire support, supply, combat odds. Let's see. I'm not sure if this game, uh, as some of the older games, allow or do not allow advance after combat. I'm not saying that this is true to this game, but a lot of the older SPI and some Avalon Hill games would not allow advance after combat unless um, the defender was in a certain type of terrain then then the attacker could uh, advance into that hex hmm you would think that I would uh, look that up and um, had that ready to go let me uh, take a break here and check it out Okay, couldn't find any uh, rules allowing a, the attacker to advance after combat. Um, I'm not saying it's not there, but I couldn't find it, and I'm guessing it's probably not there. So, we are going to go to the Allied uh, second movement page. Here is where you would land um, the units in the second wave box. There's quite a few, and I'm just not going to worry about it, but they would land. Some could land wherever they invaded out. They could land, you know, land here, and there's other beach hexes, too, where other units would have landed. Um, but I'm not going to put them all there except for the glider unit. And yes, I can't find the original glider unit, so the 508th Regiment of the 82nd uh uh, paratroopers are going to have to um, substitute. Um, gliders can't move on the turn that they land. They have to land in a supplied hex. Uh, ye, or within... Yeah, let me double check this. Oh, I know. This is terrible. Let's see. The second one is... Land within four hexes of any paratroop unit. Now, I'm not sure if the ones that. Sorry. I'm not sure since these guys here took a hit um, and were reduced to battalion size, if they're still considered airborne or not. I do not believe that they are. 
I can't find any information to confirm or deny that so I'm just going to go ahead and assume that they are not which just leaves the, this unit over here just all, almost off screen as the only real airborne unit uh, left on the allied side so I'm going to put I'm going to put the glider unit. Uh, let's see. Can't land in enemy zone of control. And Bocage. A world of Bocage. And I'd like to land him here at Carrington. Yeah, whatever. Carrington. But it's a Bocage hex. Um, with this with the city so I'm gonna say Bocage probably overrules the city so we're gonna have to land him somewhere else one two three four up right now that's that looks good enough sorry and he cannot move any further um, once he lands okay other units I don't think the paratroop units can move unless they are in supply and this unit here is on the map is not considered to be in supply because this German unit here blocks um, the transportation line leading to the supply hex so He'll have to remain there until um, he becomes into a gain supply status. Let's see if you can stay in focus here. Mm. Like I said, if I had landed units here or here at Utah, I would have probably put a supply <coughs> depot right there. But we will assume he's in supply, but I'm just. Um, yeah, we'll assume he's in supply, although there would have been German units over here too, but I'm going to put him, well, let's see if he can even cross the river. What's my terrain effects? Terrain effects, going through Bocage, uh, his movement allowance is four or less, it'll cost him one. To enter the city will be one third, so he should be able to make it uh, cross the river. Uh, just a minute. Cross the river hex side, two additional, so that's four, or what am I saying? That's two plus, blah, plus the bocage, that's three, and then a third, so uh, I'm going to say he can make it, being math challenged as I am. I guess he could go down to the road and across. Either way, he's there. Uh, I know that's not terribly close, but uh, to see it, but. That's what you get for amateur photography. All right. I need 16 factors to attack this unit in a trench. And it's another 4 to 1. It's entrenched, not in a trench. But to attack a unit that is entrenched, uh, there'll be another um, plus 4 to the die roll. I'm not sure why an entrenched unit gets a same bonus as a fortified unit, but that is how the rules say. All right, so we're going to move up the commando units. One, two, three, four. You have to pay uh, one extra movement point to enter an enemy zone of control, and they can move because they're in supply. Pretty much the same here. One, two, three. So the commando units move. I know. They seem to be like they're a long ways away. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I will use... What was I going to use? Naval gunfire support later? Uh, on the 10... Because I can get uh, 
10 factors at 10 hexes on uh, this German unit, I'd like to get at least 16, and I cannot use it unless I use um, adjacent units in the attack or defense. So 10, 12, 14, I'm going to need another unit. <clears throat> so I guess we'll just take, you know, let's take a unit over here. Uh, one, two, let's go. One, two, three. That should be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus ten. That should be twenty. That's going to be what? Four times four is uh, sixteen. Another four. What? By one? Yeah, that looks close. All right. Other units. I remember there would be a big backlog of units there on these two hexes, but for the sake of this example, I'm not really going to worry about that. Okay. We'll get rid of this entrenched marker because I know the unit's entrenched. And we're staying in some kind of focus. All right, what are we going to do? Our objectives are Bayou, Bayou, whatever you want to call it in French. And over here, uh, if I can get to it, is up higher, I guess. Um, St. Lo. So, I think we will try to drive for St. Lo because Utah will have its own, um, own problems to worry about. Which means uh, we're kind of in focus, not really. This is kind of how I am when I wake up early in the morning. I have the same type of uh, focus pro uh, focusing problem. I'll be glad to get my camera back. Okay, so we're going to drive um, up this way, I think, with these guys. And I do want to protect the supply source, but like I said, there would be a whole bunch of other units coming on during this phase. So I think the supply source would be safe. Okay, ah, sorry. Smack the old microphone again, huh? These units, these armor units, well, not him. This would be an armor unit. Um, let me think here. Engage brain. Okay. They will move through roads um, at one third of a movement point, as well as the infantry unit. So I'm going to take that as every three hexes. So starting here, one, two. Is this anywhere on? Yeah, we're still on there. Two, three, uh, for some reason, roads do not affect, yeah, it says, uh, if entering through a non-road, okay, non-road, so I'm guessing there's a bridge here, so we're going to move up adjacent to that unit. Ah. Is combat mandatory? Okay, it's been about a month since I read these rules. I should have went ahead and read them before I attempted this. No, it's at the discretion. So, being at the discretion, he can, this armored unit or armored battalion, can move up to here. The infantry unit, however, will not be quite so. Uh, will not have quite the same flexibility. So, one, two, three. Well, I guess he will. Four. Yep, we can barely see that. Um, well, it's farther away, so I guess maybe you know, as we go farther away, we you don't see things as well. 
Anyway, not the point. The other units, I think, will just fan out. Because they're probably going to be needed up here to engage that stack or unit in, entrenched. I'm pretty certain that this unit will be destroyed. So I'm just basically going to go. It could help out the Canadians over there. I may, but I want to kind of keep them together uh, within a centralized location. So one, two, three, and we'll just stop there and hold that road and the supply <coughs> route open. And the other seven four. The other seven four is going to go ahead and take control of the fortress. Okay, <clears throat> that is it for the Allied second movement phase. Okay, we're going to go to uh, on the first and first turn, which is the invasion turn. We're going to go to the Allied combat phase. Allied player then allocates his land units, enable gunfire to attack, and resolves combat. Units in an invasion beach hex adjacent to an enemy unit must attack those enemy units. So there's the mandatory combat. All right. We're going to focus on this battle right here. I'm using 10 points off of the naval support units right there, the one in the back. And let's see, plus, let's see, 10, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it looks like a 5 to 1 with a plus 4. This is the only major attack, or only attack I'm going to make. So let's see what a plus 4 at uh, 5 to 1 is. Uh, well, this might be good. Roll to two. We're going to add four to that, so that's going to make that a six. Die roll of six is a defender retreat at five to one. So we we'll move that out of the way, and we take this uh, German garrison basically, eliminate him, and I guess that's pretty much it on that. One. There's no advance after combat. And that resolves the <clears throat> first, uh, what am I doing here? The Allied Combat Phase, first movement, second movement. Um, anyway. That resolves the uh, second allied combat phase. Looking this over, I may have made a mistake in my sequencing, but anyway, then you, the allied player would allocate reinforcements by uh, dividing his second movement phase reinforcements among uh, the supply areas, not more than 30 uh, combat strength points at any single supply hex. And then the allies, yeah, this is where I screwed up. But like I said, it's just a sequencing, a sequencing, sequencing uh, error. There is no second allied combat phase in the first turn. It looks like, or probably any turn. But there is a movement. Let me double check this. I'm so embarrassed. First combat. Uh, Okay, and then there is a second combat resolution, then reinforcement, then second movement. So there is that in the normal turn, but in this turn, so I was right. Um, there is an allied player second movement phase. All allied units movement allowances are halved. Uh, in addition, the allied units may not use roads. The other units must pay the hex movement costs. Well, anyway, 
Most Mirovia's units except for the just landed glider units and out of supply paratroop units. And then that will end the Allied player turn of game turn one. Well, anyway, you didn't get to see the things in sequence, but you got to see a little bit of movement and some combat. And I apologize for the um, unprofessional and somewhat. Um, oh, unprofessional is good. Um, presentation of this so anyway that just gives you an idea a little bit about the game and uh, it's an old game from the past I would like to see air interdiction rules but um, you know they could be fairly easily easily simulated by just allocating a certain number of points to um, certain uh, hexes in the uh, rear areas thus delaying you know German reinforcements um, you know with an extra movement point or whatever um, but the naval gun fire support I think the longest it can go is 10 hexes so you're gonna be somewhere out here um, with the uh, artillery support so back here it would be nice to be able to have the ability to interdict some of the uh, roads that lead off the edge where the Germans will be um, coming but anyway the game is old state-of-the-art is not something I would use to describe it and I think that's about all I can do to mess up this video and the one preceding it uh, I will hopefully have my camera back on my next video so things will be eh. it'll be the same mistakes and crappy narration and all that type of thing but the picture should be nicer to look at anyway I will catch you later.